So bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim qala azza wa jal rijalun la tulhihim tijaratun wa la bay'un an dhikrillah wa aqamu as-salata wa atu az-zakata wa yakhafuna yawman tataqallabu fihi al-qulubu wal-absar Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wahlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli amin ya rab Today I want to talk about this myth myth mythical harmful dangerous idea of the alpha male you know when we look at first of all even the scientists know that there's no such thing as the alpha wolf as we understand it i'm going to show that to you and i'm going to even show you from the works of the person uh, that promoted this idea of the alpha wolf or the alpha male and the beta female or the alpha male and female and then the, the rest are beta as you'll see this is a myth and a misnomer but how does it affect men and women of this age well a guy feels well if i'm an introvert if i'm silent if i'm uh not submissive not submissive in the sense that it, the negative idea of submissive well there's a positive idea of submissive which is aslim taslim surrender and you'll be safe meaning to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but this idea of dominating caught uh, the attention of scientists in the beginning, in the 1930s and 40s, because of the idea of the survival of the fittest, and it made sense to them, especially when it came to human beings in the animal kingdom. And then from there, a lot of things were done in these, in this, uh, following this idea. Movies were made, you know, the, uh, the alpha male is the superhero and he solves all the world problems and everybody listens to him and, you know, this is how things are. It's actually not true. Not only is it against the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet, which I'll talk about a little bit, but it's actually not true in the real world, right? And how is it dangerous? It's dangerous because sisters who are trying to get married are like, or they do get married and they're like, why is my husband so nice? He's always so nice. He's not very dominant. He must not be an alpha male, right? And that becomes a negative thing. Oh, you're just one of the submissive ones in the negative sense of the word, right? And uh, because they've done this studies, right? Girls like a man who is not super dominant, but dominant. And girls definitely don't like the guy that they can identify as he's submissive, okay? So, but what if he's nice? What if he has a generous heart? What if he gives, he's willing to compromise? What if he is willing to stand up for his principles, but he's not willing to make fitna for it, right? So the idea of the alpha male and the beta male and is a black and white world that does not work with human beings. Human beings are too complex for it. You know, that daughter who looks at her husband, her, her father, you know, my father works for his boss. His boss is the dominant one. My father is not the dominant one or the male. Who's like, you know, I don't fit this like alpha male dominant dominating. I'm too nice for that. Right. And so it causes a big problem within society where people have to live up to this idea of and this idea of dominating. Right. This idea of like the authoritative figure, the one who's high in the social structure, uh, this high in the social structural ladder. Right. And that, you know that other guys in order to be in his position they have to fight him off and then he gets all the girls right this is uh completely just all false what it does prove by the way if anything is that uh, polygamy is part of the animal kingdom that's what it does prove but it doesn't prove as you'll see very clearly as i'm going to show you that the idea of the alpha male uh is not uh, real at all. So let's start with the scientific aspects of this first and then we'll talk about the social and cultural aspects of this and then finally we'll look at the prophetic examples of uh, what does the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam teach us about uh, the personalities of the people the Prophet produced and the Prophet himself Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So let us go ahead and take a look at this. So one of the people that coined the term uh, alpha male, okay, was this man, David Mesh, who's been asking his publisher to stop publishing his book, but they haven't listened to him. And so I just want this, uh, he wrote this. Uh, so he wrote a revision of his studies, of his idea, because, uh, let me make this clear, they ha he had come to some conclusion studying wolves in a small space.
So he had studied wolves in a small space uh, of a zoo in, I think it was Switzerland. And he came up looking at that. He came up with this idea of the alpha wolf. Okay. So he himself writes on his own website over here called davidmesh.org. The concept of the alpha wolf is well ingrained in the popular wolf culture, at least partly because of my book, The Wolf ecology and behavior of an endangered species written in 1968 published in 1970 republished in back paper in 1981 and currently still in print despite my numerous pleas to the publisher to stop publishing it although most of the book's info is accurate much is outdated we've learned more about wolves in the last 40 years than all previous history one of the outdated pieces of information is the concept of the alpha wolf Alpha implies competing with others and becoming the top dog by winning a contest or battle. However, most wolves who lead packs achieve their position simply by mating and producing pups, meaning that dog, that wolf that they were calling the alpha wolf, didn't take that position because he fought others off, A, nor did he, att he attain that position because he was the parent, because most wolves leave their pack by the time they're one year old. I'll come to that in a little bit. However, most wolves who lead packs achieve their position simply by mating and producing pups, which then became their pack. In other words, they were merely breeders or parents. That's all we can call them today. Breeding male, breeding female, male parent, female parent, or adult male or adult female. In the rare packs that include more than one breeding animal, the dominant breeder can be called that. Any breeding daughter can be called a subordinate, subordinate breeder, okay? So it's very rare, meaning this is not the norm, okay? And it only happens in zoos and in places where they're not in their natural territory. Okay, now let's look at the next uh, piece of information over here. You know, one of the harmful examples of this society, that society that says, you know, women rights, women rights, women rights, when one of the reasons Trump got voted in, right? One of the reasons that uh, Trump got voted in is because of this concept that's also ingrained in society that, oh, he is, you know, a man's man, right? He's bus business, he's a billionaire, you know, he, and then in order to show that, what did he have to do? That he had to play with women, okay? It actually benefited him from the pop culture perspective. So Eric Trump recently suggested that when his father, Donald Trump, bragged about grabbing women, blah, blah, blah. He said, oh, this is just an alpha male thing, right? And so the fact is, there's no such thing as an alpha male thing. Okay, there's no such thing as an alpha male thing. And uh, let me also show you one more thing here. And so wolf packs don't actually have alpha males and alpha females. The idea is based on a misunderstanding. The researcher who introduced this term tried to clear the confusion two decades ago, but the myth still continues and so even you know uh, because of this alpha male idea one of the things that happened is when they were doing dog training uh, for example in the military they thought it was very important to show you're the alpha right so they would uh, train the dogs and also punish the dogs on purpose to just show that i'm the one that's in charge right and so uh, it has a negative impact not only on the animal world but on the psychology of boys because they think that they're not really men unless they're behaving in a dominant way. Uh, and it has a negative impact on women because it makes them look down on the men around them because they're not acting in a certain way that they've been ingrained to think that this is how men should be. An example of that is how many women voted for Trump despite what he did with other women. Oh, this is how guys are, right? So... This has to be kept in mind. Um, in this article, a link to where uh, this uh, website or app or software I'm using, where if you click on the link, it'll give you all the articles that I'm showing in this video, inshallah. So in this particular uh, article by Psychology Today, one of the things that uh, this uh, lady, this professor discusses is that, you know, it's not just about dominating, right? There are other aspects that show manliness to women. So, for example, uh, one of them would be, as you will see here, uh, is the height of a person, right? And so that is related to dominance for sure. And then the voice and each guy is, is a, there's a variation. There are many, many factors, right? 
uh, how the person looks, uh, you know, how the person looks. So uh, in the animal world, social dominance is often equated with might of the alpha males, right? Which we already studied as wrong. But let's remember, okay, that humans are thankfully more uh, more complex than that. So even the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, Talut alayhi salatu wasalam and his leadership, Allah gives the reason for his leadership, you know, uh, Allah increased him in his body size, his strength, and his knowledge, right? And so he had, uh, he was ulul aidi wa ulul absar. He was a man who knew how to fight with his hands and work with his hands, and he was a man of insight. Both of these were brought. That's the true man, meaning in Islam it has nothing to do with level of dominance. You can have a person who's very strong in fighting, and very strong to stand up for his faith. But he's extremely nice and extremely gentle and cries when people are hurt. And he's a person of insight. And he is not Islam has a completely different view of what it means to be a male. Okay? But over here I just want to dispel this idea to the brothers and sisters that think, oh, this idea of you know, when we're talking about fatuwa and maruwa and Islamic chivalry and to be like uh, the selfless man that is going to be helping the work of the deen, uh, that's not about this idea of the alpha male at all. Okay, it's not about that at all. And I think, uh, you know, in in and what has happened is uh, this alpha male idea has also caught on because uh, as a reaction to feminism. And so you have even Muslims who will talk about being the alpha male, but alpha male as understood by its the the people that coined the term and talked about it and then you have all these uh, websites and experts who will train men to pick up women or convince women to go out dating with them or whatever you know mate with them or whatever using this idea of how do you become the alpha male right because that's what women are attracted to and so it is a very dangerous and a very harmful idea this idea of men that this culture is giving you know the, 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 how many Supermans or Spidermans or, you know, this guy that's going to save the world, they're out there, right? So you overlook your parents, you overlook your, your father, you overlook your brothers, you overlook your husband, and so on and so forth. So this is very problematic. I'm just going to mention this article, how the myth of alpha male has hijacked modern masculinity, Right? Uh, are men animals? Anthropologist Matthew Gutman explores how modern ideas of masculinity repress and harm men. So here's a whole article that will be talking about this because it, it, it gives people the wrong image to live up to, right? And it makes men feel like they're not men because they're nice or that they're not dominating in the sense that they say that they want uh, uh, somebody to be dominating. Which Islamically is not, it doesn't have humility and doesn't have humbleness, right? And so we're, we're putting these icons in our, in the minds of our boys, uh, that you gotta be like the alpha male, which is very problematic. And we have this article here, the myth of alpha male, straight guys, single straight guys. If you want to attract more women, right? Research suggests you should cultivate kindness and altruism. You know, and then uh, this article, there are a lot of false dichotomies out there. Left brain versus right brain, natures versus nurture, and then, of course, the alpha male versus the other males, the, sub the submissive males, right? Uh, and so uh, alpha males, those who make at the top of the social status hierarchy, they have a greater access to power, money, mates, and they gain uh, they gain through physical prowess, intimidation, and domination. Alphas are typically described as real men, in contrast to the beta males, the weak, the submissive, the subordinate guys who are low status and only get access to mates once women decide to settle down, going searching for a nice guy, right? So this um, kind of like summarizes the, the harms and the harmful effects of this idea of the dominant male, you know, and, and so now let's look at the prophetic model. The prophetic model is not that of the dominating guy. The prophetic model is of a man who is Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They are brave, right? But they are kind. It's the, it's the opposites coming together, right? You're strong, yet you're gentle. That is a man. You're, uh, 
you're um, kind, but you're fearless, right? You're uh, Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Muhammad. You're caring when it comes to the things you should care about and dismissive or ignore the things that are, don't need your attention. Min husnil islami mar'i tarkuhu ma la ya'nihi. Amongst the good characters of a Muslim is to leave out the things that don't concern him. Right? Uh, the the father or the brother or the husband that has actually opposite qualities in one person. He knows when to be nice, when not to be so nice. He knows when to stand firm for his principles. He knows when to be flexible and when to bend over for the other person. At times he's going to be more dominant. At other times he's going to be less dominant. At no time is he submissive to something against his premise, his his fundamental principles. He'd rather die than to give up La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if he's in, in a jama'ah and they are fighting, he's not going to back down because he sees that we're now losing. Now he will go till the end. That, But that is the same person that when he's dying will prefer other people to have water, right, than himself. He is selfless. That is a man. The person who's selfless, the person who is at, at all times preferring other people to himself. This is what a man does. He cares for his wife before himself. He cares for his children before himself. He cares for his family members before himself. He cares for his brothers and his jama before himself. That is real futuwa, right? While And he's somebody who's bringing in the qualities of somebody who's strong but extremely humble. He puts other people first, right? Not this idea of like the wolf that dominates, which is not even true, right? This has put uh, many men in a very bad uh, position regarding their identity, right? And many women who now look down upon the men because they don't fit the iconic Trump or Alpha Wolf model. And so uh, this idea came to me when one of the sisters, I think she wrote a comment on one of my speeches, and she said, you know, you need to talk about this topic of the myth of the alpha male. I think it's completely correct what she said and so that's why I decided to make this uh, YouTube video and this idea that you know that the idea even the brothers the Muslim brothers a lot of them that are talking about the alpha male and that we need to you know uh, reassert ourselves in our, uh, our as our manhood right they're they're falling into in trying to do that they're falling into the all the books that are being written uh, from the perspective of the alpha male. And they're not looking at our classical liter literature on fatuwa, uh, our classical literature on manhood in Islam, right? From the Islamic perspective, from the prophetic perspective, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right? He is the man who is stronger than a hundred men, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he's also, if he sees a child passing away, he's extremely uh, sad and upset, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right, uh, and so uh, the point being here is that the modern Western civilization has created this idea of man that harms the men of this, you know, Superman, Alpha, Wolf type idea, right? And then when they do create uh, the, the, you know, the, this this guy, right? He's either in society, okay, like a boss, and He's dominating and everyone listens to him. Or he's the kind of like the outcast. He's not part of the society. He's part, not part of the jama'ah. He's the outcast who is the hero, right? And both are dangerous because you have to be part of a jama'ah. And in the jama'ah, you have to have humility, right? Because when the majority decides against you, you can't be acting like an alpha male at that time saying, no, you're going to go with my idea. Even if the idea is wrong, you have to go with the idea. It's like, it's just necessary because the, the, the togetherness of the jama'ah is more important than, than what you think is right. So anyway, that's a side point. Uh, the other thing this does is, you know, you have feminism, 
being antagonistic to men, and now you have divided the men to be antagonistic to one another. So, you, so you know, a guy is always going to be struggling, if he has this in his mind, to be the alpha male, struggling against other men. And so men have been pitched against one another, and and then men and women have been pitched against one another, antagonistic to one another. And so this is, you know, amongst the very, very negative uh aspects of this inshallah ta'ala those of you that are listening tell me what you think are some of the negative aspects of this and how this has affected you and your life and inshallah definitely share this with others also inshallah jazakumullah khairan i also want to mention rajab is coming it's you know the dua of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for rajab barik lana rajab right wa balighna shahr ramadan and may allah help us meet the month of ramadan and may Allah make Rajab a blessing for us. And so this is the time where you need to start mentally preparing for Ramadan. And you need to start mentally preparing for how you're going to uh, go into Ramadan. You need to start now so that you're ready at that time. And our goal should be that we're in a very good position by the time we reach Ramadan. Inshallah ta'ala, please pray for me that my time from Rajab to the end of Ramadan is a spiritual one of spiritual path and spiritual elevations and spiritual openings and understandings inshallah ta'ala for me also and uh, may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a spiritual opening for all of us uh, all of us every muslim that is a concerned muslim about the ummah uh, of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam okay and may allah help us make this the best ramadan that we've ever had in our lives inshallah ta'ala so now uh, having said that i hope that you will uh, share this information uh, with the other brothers and sisters because how this idea harms us at a very deep psychological level and the best example I can think of that is the voting that happened for Trump who was considered you know he's the man's man right he's not scared to say what he comes to his mind and you know he yeah he did play with women but that's okay kind of like playing onto that whole that's the, that's like one of the fruits of this concept of the alpha male that just and but but it also affects our 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 wives uh if they're part of this western civilizational culture and it also affects our boys who don't fit that model and it completely is antithetical to the islamic teachings of humility of niceness and kindness and selflessness and not trying to force your opinion upon other people not being dominating right so because Edler, the psychologist, right, he, his whole, you know, Freud was all about sex. Edler was one of the students of Freud, his whole, which became very dominant, you know, Edler's whole thing was, you know, the, uh, everything for mankind is about domination, domination, domination. And so, uh, we'll just end here, inshallah ta'ala, jazakumullah khairan, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.